Hi, this is Jeff Zeig, and here I am in the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix, Arizona. And we have a series. It's a series of me recounting some of the experiences that I had with Dr. Erickson. And for those of you, some of these uh, have been written. For example, they're in many of the stories are in a book, Experiencing Erickson, that I uh, wrote and edited in 1985, and that's available. Uh, uh, in Amazon, Experiencing Erickson, also in print, available through Taylor and Francis Publishers. But there are two stories that I'd like to add to the collection, one about Dr. Erickson's ingenuity. Um, one concerns supervision, one concerns uh, a teaching experience that I can recount from one of my friends and colleagues here in Phoenix, Arizona. So I was seeing a patient who had been a former patient of Dr. Erickson, and this was a, a rather eccentric man, and he had built a very um, elaborate uh, home in the Phoenix area, but uh, a home that was kind of idiosyncratic and a home that um, most people wouldn't want to live in, but had uh, ecological, um, uh, aspects to it that would have been time consuming for many people, but very good in terms of being environmental friendly. It was, uh, man, the man was a little eccentric and very intellectual and uh, speaking in a much uh, less emotional and more didactic way. A uh, little bit of distancing from what would be customary uh, among people in terms of their emotional interaction. And so I asked him, because he had been previously a patient of Dr. Erickson, I asked him uh, to tell me something about what the experience was. And he said to me that Dr. Erickson interpreted his dream. Now this was interesting to me because I didn't know that Dr. Erickson did dream interpretation. So I asked him, what was the dream about? And he said, well, the dream was about a marmot. Now, a marmot is a rodent-like animal, M-A-R-M-O-T, marmot. And uh, Dr. Erickson said, well, the dream is about your mother. And the man was curious and said, well, what do you mean? And Dr. Erickson said, well, M-A-R, the first three letters of the animal's name, that sounds like mar, ma, and M-A, that sounds like ma, and the last three letters, M-O-T, that is mother. And this dream was about your mother. And the man looked at me and said to me sincerely, I, I, I never knew that my unconscious mind was so creative. And maybe it wasn't necessarily that the man's unconscious mind was so creative, but the, Dr. Erickson's unconscious mind was so creative, shaping the man because it was relevant at that moment to think in the therapy session uh, about his forebearers. One other story that comes to mind, somewhat similar, a friend of mine was in a teaching seminar with Dr. Erickson, and out of the people who were available in the teaching seminar, Dr. Erickson asked my friend to come into his home. Well, Dr. Erickson had a home and he had a small, very modest guest house, which housed his office and also the place where he had his teaching seminar. And my friend was honored that Dr. Erickson asked him to come into his living room and sit with him. And Dr. Erickson asked Mrs. Erickson to get one of his ties, neckties. Now, Dr. Erickson at the end of his life wore Western ties, bolo ties, string ties, often uh, with some unusual decoration, uh, perhaps uh, uh, one of the stones that could be fashioned into a, a clip that would hold these strings together. Um, and, uh, but rather than having one of those ties, Dr. Erickson asked Mrs. Erickson to bring one of his earlier ties. And it was the evening, and my friend remembers that the sun was, go was, was going down, and Dr. Erickson was holding the tie and weaving stories about the tie and describing the tie and the way in which it was an old tie, but it was 
uh, something that was gifted to him by his family and how the weave of the tie kept the threads together and how there were wrinkles to the tie but that the wrinkles added character and how there were stains to the tie but those stains were part of memories and I remember my friend saying to me how suddenly he became teary and couldn't perfectly understand what Dr. Erickson was talking about and why this elaborate discussion about ties. And it was only when my friend left Dr. Erickson's office that he realized that Dr. Erickson was talking with him metaphorically about something that was really important to him in his life, which was something about family ties. And Dr. Erickson using the tie as a context where he could so talk about the tie on the social level while on the psychological level he could awaken realizations that could be valuable in helping this man to be more adaptive in his life. This technique was a technique that Dr. Erickson invented I think in a paper that he wrote in 1963 or 1964 about the interspersal technique, a very inventive associative technique where something is discussed on the social level and meaning, evocative meaning is created on the social level. So this is Jeff Zeig. Here I am in Phoenix, Arizona with our series on stories about Milton Erickson. Thank you very much.